Hello everyone and welcome to the start of the Shadowlands Knowing Your Enemy Guides. These guides will discuss key features of a certain spec in arena gameplay, showing you what to expect from them, as well as potentially being able to counter them. Today, we will be going over how to deal with arms warriors. And if you're interested in seeing the rest of our Knowing Your Enemy series, we'll be releasing the majority of them exclusively on our newly relaunched WoW site over the next couple of months. We've also got introductory class guides for every class from some of the best players around, along with weekly releases of arena commentaries you can watch to learn how the pros make their decisions in real time. So, if you're interested in taking your PvP game to the next level and starting your journey to Gladiator, head on over to skillcap.com wow and sign up today. Link in the description below. And if you're interested in joining our community Discord where you can find partners to play with and access some of our resources, we've also got that linked in the description. Let's start with the basics of arms, which is the fact that it makes use of defensive stance in arena. Being in this stance means that arms warriors will be harder to kill, making them take 20% reduced damage, but at the same time, they deal 20% less damage in PvP instances, despite what the tooltip says. So, pressuring a warrior like this wizard cleave does can be a good way to keep a warrior in defensive stance. Some compositions may not favor hitting a warrior, which will result in them not being in defensive stance. This allows them to deal far more pressure, which can be troublesome if left unchecked. Here's an example against a shadow priest, which our class's warriors can destroy. This mirror matchup results in both warriors tunneling down each other's shadow priests, being able to demolish them without the need of defensive stance. This results in cooldowns having to be traded to survive the onslaught. The best way to deny a warrior's passive pressure is to try and kite or CC them. This will deny their passive pressure from ramping up and overwhelming your team. Mages and druids are usually excellent in this regard, being able to spam sheep or cyclone, followed by root effects, stopping a warrior from maintaining uptime. For the classes that can't kite or CC an arms warrior heavily, your main survival tool is going to be to peel their offensive CDs. Arms Warriors have quite a number of powerful offensive cooldowns, which can deal an incredible amount of damage. These are Colossus Smash, Avatar, Bladestorm, and Spear of Bastion if they are Kyrian. The biggest ones to watch out for are definitely the Warbreaker and Avatar windows. If you can't kite the warrior here, you want to try to CC the warrior during these cooldowns, otherwise you may have to use defensive CDs in order to survive them. If you don't instantly peel a warrior during these CDs, they could opt to use Bladestorm during them as well, denying any CC on them during most of their cooldowns, resulting in them doing an immense amount of pressure. Saying that though, it can still be worth it to peel these cooldowns late rather than using nothing for them if you're tanking damage. Disarm is one of the best ways to negate a warrior's pressure during their cooldowns. It also lines up well with every Warbreaker window being able to reliably peel one of their big damaging abilities. Bear in mind this is only when the enemy warrior plays with Dreadnought, as if they play with anger management this wouldn't be the case. The best way to use this or CC a warrior is ideally just as you see them use Warbreaker. That way you land your peeling abilities before they potentially get a Bladestorm off or before they get any big damage rolling reducing their effectiveness. When trading cooldowns, try to use effective ones that you can match or big ones if you're really struggling to live. Die by the Sword with the Stalwart Guardian Conduit makes it an excellent cooldown exchange. It negates most of the warrior's damage and could be traded for every avatar if needed. As for Bladestorm and Spear of Bastion, both of these abilities are strong, short-ranged AoE CDs. As such, it can deal immense pressure on targets that are stacked, likely to force defensive cooldowns. Spear of Bastion also denies mobility cooldowns, as well as the affected targets being able to kite out of its radius. To reduce both of these abilities' effectiveness, simply keeping them tracked and being a bit spread should result in only one target being prone to the pressure of these spells. As for Bastion, some classes can use mobility cooldowns to escape. Gateway, AMS, Death's Advance, and Cloak of Shadows are all examples of cooldowns that could be used to get yourself out of the spear's effect. A Hunter's Craven Stratagem is an excellent deterrent against this CD. Simply using a Feign Death during the Bastion could allow you to escape its grasp, making them unhindered by it. Throughout the ages, warriors have always had Execute, but now it is back to the state of being much more powerful. This could easily catch enemy players by surprise, due to sudden death procs and arms warriors playing with Massacre, as you can see here dealing mighty damage with additional cooldowns. 
although there's no real stopping executes from warriors. As healers, you can try to prevent executes by keeping your partners up above 35% HP. That way you can avoid more executes from Massacre, which will reduce a warrior's finishing potential. It's common for some warriors to be Venthyr, an ideal covenant for raiding as well as a strong one for PvP. This means that they have Condemn, allowing them to essentially execute targets at above 80% health as well. Again, there's no real way to deny this. However, if you're a composition like a Wizard Cleave, you could look to heavily pressure the warrior. This is effective because it forces the warrior to spend Rage on Ignore Pain, which means that they'll have less Rage to spam Condemn, nerfing their damage output significantly. In Shadowlands, warriors have been reintroduced to the return of Shattering Throat. This ability can get rid of immunity effects, being Ice Block, Divine Shield, and Blessing of Protection if left uninterrupted. It has also been given an additional added effect, dealing 500% extra damage to players with Absorb Shield effects. This works extremely well against Life Cocoon or the last shield of a Disc Priest's Rapture. As such, you want to be careful, seeing the Warrior's cast bar in case they make an attempt to rip off the shield and slay your partner. As for Paladins or their teammates, if you are going to use Bop or Divine Shield, you could look to Line of Sight the Warrior Shattering Throw, denying its use. Every player could also look to CC the Warrior during the Shadowing Throw cast, which will also deny it from going off. It's also worth noting that you can even intervene a Shattering Throw on your partners. Speaking of intervene, this is another big aspect of Arms Warrior gameplay, as well as having Disarm, which are powerful defensive CDs. These abilities can be very overpowered against most melee. Intervene redirects all physical abilities to the warrior, including damage, CC, and even interrupts such as kick and pummel. Disarm stops a ton of damage and certain abilities against every melee, excluding Windwalkers and Feral Druids. Even though Intervene can be a powerful defensive CD against melee, most melee cleaves could look to carry on their pressure, which can annihilate the warrior quickly. This could easily force the die by the sword out of the warrior, making them a vulnerable target after. Sweeping strikes is super effective during Intervene usages as it will increase pressure on the warrior. AoE abilities are also effective, being able to go through the Intervene effects, making abilities such as Fists of Fury more difficult to deal with. You can also look to deny Intervene with crowd control on the warrior, preventing its use. You can abuse line of sight from the warrior with their partners or keep the warrior in any form of CC. Root effects can be excellent here unless the warrior has a root breaker. Another way to deny Intervene is potentially look to tunnel down the warrior instead, since Intervene can never be a factor when killing a warrior, preventing them from peeling any setups. This could be the way to go playing against a setup based comp such as RMP. As for Disarm, most classes can't avoid it, but most classes can usually use other globals during Disarm windows. The only classes where Disarm is virtually useless is against Feral Druids and Windwalker Monks as they don't need a weapon to deal their pressure. Warriors are severely hindered by Disarm, however, you have the ability to pre-parry or pre-bladestorm Disarms, negating its effect completely. Spell Reflect has also been changed from its original form during the last expansion. It's now baseline, meaning an arms warrior will have this every game. However, it's been changed to only reflecting one spell, making it much weaker. This means casters can have an easier time to get spell reflection off, making it easier to burst warriors down or land CC on them as well. It also means that players could help take the spell reflect away by using an instant spell on it. Fire mages can do this themselves by using a fire blast on the reflect in order to land sheeps. This can happen often with early overwatches from an arms warrior. Not sure what Overwatch is? Well, Overwatch is a nice new PvP talent Arms Warriors have gained in Shadowlands. The new ability allows an Arms Warrior to intervene to give their target a spell reflection as well. As such, you can use your intervene effectively against casters, which will most likely be the talent of choice against Wizard Cleaves in general. When played with well, it can even work on instant CC, making it super disruptive to any caster. It can even be an annoyance for hunters, being able to reflect many traps if timed well. One big downside to Overwatch is that you can lose the overpowered aspect of Intervene, being that it soaks damage from their teammate. This is great news for physical damage dealers as they can turn up the pressure on the warrior's teammates, knowing there is no Intervene to save them. A warrior will have to choose to intervene his partner to reduce pressure, meaning the Overwatch aspect may go to waste, or to use it for the reflect on their partners, but then can't protect their partners from physical damage at an important time. As for casters, dealing with this will be exactly the same with how you deal with spell reflection. 
you can get rid of the reflect with one spell. So if you're ready for it, you can time other spells to get more CC or damage off. Here, even though the Hex was reflected from Overwatch, the Paladin immediately lands a Hodge onto the Shaman. This still chains the CC on the Shaman, which can continue causing pressure and momentum for the Wizard Cleave. Next up, Die by the Sword is a widely known defensive CD, being the biggest self-defensive cooldown an Arms Warrior has. In Shadowlands, the spell received a massive cooldown reduction, being a 2-minute CD. Stalwart Guardian is a conduit that reduces its cooldown further, roughly at a 1 minute and 30 second cooldown. This means it's half the cooldown it was in previous expansions. This results in having a powerful safety measure, especially against melee. Arms Warriors will be even more difficult to kill now that it's a much lower CD. Even though it is a powerful cooldown, if used late, you can still look to kill through it and kill targets that use it too late. Warriors are still susceptible to magic damage during this cooldown, so heavy spell damage can still warrant kills if they don't use it on a timely manner or if you have massive pressure. Last but not least, Warriors have a number of legendaries they can use in Arena. There are three main ones that an Arms Warrior will use, being Unhinged, Signet of the Tormented Kings, and Misshapen Mirror. This can be quite daunting to deal with at first. However, dealing with all of them is similar to dealing with other aspects of an Arms Warrior which we have already discussed. Misshapen Mirror is pretty much the new mass spell reflection, but it only works on the nearest ally. It will be taken most likely against Caster Cleaves, giving warriors another way to disrupt more magic CC. The way to deal with this is the same as Spell Reflection or Overwatch, as it will only give off one Reflect. Tracking Spell Reflection and crowd controlling the warrior during your setups will also deny the use of it. Signet of Tormented Kings adds even more punch to your offensive CDs, allowing warriors to gain an additional cooldown when using Avatar or Bladestorm. This makes it more important to peel these offensive CDs, and as such, dealing with this legendary is the exact same as dealing with other offensive cooldowns. Lastly, with Unhinged, this can be stacked with Sweeping Strikes and Sharpened Blade, making their Bladestorm deal immense pressure, both single target and against two players. Dealing with this will be the same as dealing with Bladestorm in general, being spread out if possible so that you can avoid taking massive pressure while a warrior is using this cooldown. Alright, and that covers all the key aspects of Arms Warriors in the Knowing Your Enemy series. Hopefully you all enjoyed this video, and feel free to leave any comments or questions down below. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.